what he accomplished in that victory by Scotty Scheffler was most impressive indeed. Let's run through some of the points of distinction. Ninth PGA Tour victory in his 120th start at the ripe old age of 27 years, nine months, and 24 days. All nine wins have come since the start of the 21-22 season. Let that settle just for a second. He's the first player to win nine or more times in the PGA Tour in the span of three seasons since Justin Thomas won nine titles between the 2016-2017 season and the 2018-2019 season. Remember, they were wraparound up until this year. Uh, he breaks a tie with John Rahm for the most wins since Scheffler joined the tour. That was at the start of the 19 and 20 season. Multiple titles at four different events now for Scotty Scheffler, the Masters, the Players, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and the Phoenix Open. Second career major championship title in his 18th start in a major. Of course, he won the Masters in 22 as well, 88th player, 88th, think about this for a second, to win multiple men's majors and the first to accomplish the feat since John Rahm won the 2023 Masters tournament. It's amazing to me when I saw that number last night looking through this data that only 88 players ever have won multiple majors. That's why I've always been the one that have said, look, if you win more than one major, I think you should be in the Hall of Fame. There's only 88. He just he became the 88th guy that have ever done it. It's a tiny sample size, ever. Second Masters Tournament title and his fifth start at the Masters. Think about that for a second. 18th player to win the Masters multiple, 18th multiple times and the first to accomplish the feat since Bubba Watson did it in 2014. He's the fourth youngest player to win the Masters multiple times. The youngest players to win the Masters multiple times are Jack Nicklaus is the youngest when he won his second one in 1965 at 25 years, two months, and 21 days. Tiger Woods in 2001 at 25 years, three months, and nine days. Seve Ballesteros in 1983 at 26 years, two days, and then Scotty Scheffler at 27 years, nine months, and 24 days, April mentioned. I mean, just, it is truly incredible what he did. So let's take a look at, at, first of all, the stats of what he accomplished. Now, bear in mind that the stats that we're going to share with you from Augusta National are not what you're probably used to seeing, say, from the PGA Tour, where you get shot link and you have all this different data coming at you. But nonetheless, I think it's interesting to, to take a look at what Scotty Scheffler did in the culmination of the week. There you see his four rounds, 66, 72, 71, 68. Now that 66 obviously was over some period of time. I mean, I haven't heard it discussed enough. A win is a win is a win. Everybody tees it up. Everybody goes out. But how much is this? Masters looked upon as different than any other because of those weather conditions over the first two days. Right? That's just Mother Nature. That's the way it goes. It's a sporting event. He hit 79% of his fairways, and keep that in mind given what I just said to you. Especially on Friday. Wind was coming from a different direction with gusts up to 45 miles per hour. He hit 64% of his greens, which again given the difficulty in hitting those greens to begin with, and then given the dif- difficulty with those conditions, speaks to his ball strike. At 1.51 putts per green, only two three putts for the week, which is incredible because, you know, the question's asked about him and his putter. Although I think we're getting to a point where, dare say we're getting past that, right? In 20 birdies for the week for Scotty Scheffler. Obviously, very, very impressive indeed. It speaks to how impressive a run he's been on and where we kind of sort Scotty Scheffler currently, where we kind of place him historically. I gave you some information that showed where he sit sits historically, but here's his last 10 starts. The Hero World Challenge. Okay, I get it, but he won it nonetheless. The Century. 
again, limited field, but you're talking about the players that conceivably are probably playing the best coming into the new season in January, tied for fifth. American Express tied for 17th. By Scotty Scheffler's standards, it's kind of a meh. AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Again, wasn't great weather. Tied for six. Knocking on the door. WM Phoenix Open. You know he loves it out there. Tied for third. Genesis Invitational. Tied for 10th. Kind of hanging around. Good play. Obviously, a lot of top 10s. Four out of five. Right? Then he wins at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Signature event, big golf course, thick overseeded rough. It asks a lot of you. Then he wins the Players' Championship. That's a flagship event of the PGA Tour. Diluted field because of, because of the flow of talent in the game of golf amongst two tours? Sure, yeah. But nonetheless, he teed up and played against the players that were there, and he wins at the Players' Championship. Difficult venue, big win, get it. Houston Open, and I've said this to you guys many times because I watched virtually every shot he hit that tournament hosting the coverage for PGA Tour Live. I just thought he was tired. He just looked fatigued to me. Mentally, you know. He's 27 years old. I don't think he was physically tired, but he said he was afterwards, so fairness to him. But he was... He was Two putts that graze the edge of the of the hole away from winning at Houston ends up finishing tie for second to Steven Yeager. And then he comes back and he wins this Masters. And he wins it, I would say, in an incredibly impressive style. Right? I didn't think that yesterday, Sunday, that... Scotty Scheffler started out great, right? I don't think that's a a shocking revelation. I think he finished, you know, with a strong finish. I, I'm not taking that away from him, but I just in you when you look at Scotty Scheffler's start yesterday, and then how he finished up, right? Par at one. Par at the at the par five second. Makes a nice birdie at three, follows it right up with a bogey. Pars at five and six, follows those up with a bogey at seven, and you're kind of these plus one now through seven holes, and you're like, uh. Then he goes on a Scotty Scheffler tear, birdies at eight, nine, and ten, gets him to two under for the day. Bogey's a difficult 11th. Now, his at 11 was not as consuming as it was for others, both on scorecard, but also in terms of momentum and mindset. Obviously, I'm talking about Morikawa, and yes, I'm talking about Ludwig as well. But then he birdies 13 and 14, right? And and I'll pause for a second because the shot he hit, his second shot into nine, I think will long be remembered as one of the great shots of all time at Augusta National, in fairness, right? How that didn't go in, I have no idea, but it was was incredible. And in all this glory that I'm recounting for you, by and large, one of the shots that impressed me the most was his tee shot at 12. You know, you've got the flag there on the right, that flag is begging you to go for it. See it on the graphic that Andrew just put up? It's down there in that neighborhood on the right. Very much the wrong side of the tracks. Don't go for it. He didn't. He did the same thing that Tiger did in 2019. I bet those two tee shots ended up just a couple paces away from each other, if that. That impressed me tremendously. Then he said, nope, not buying into it. I'm just going to hit it right over here into the filet of the green. I'm just going to hit it right into this fat spot, relatively. And he did. So he goes on to make birdies at 
13 and 14. And and again, 14, not that 13 was easy, nothing was easy, but 14 impressed me tremendously. Par at 15, okay, fine. Works his way through adversity. Then hits an absolute world-class tee shot at 16. Par's at 17 and 18, just to go through the card with you for Scotty Scheffler in that round. Impressive. What was what were you guys the most impressed with with what he did? What shots? What strategy? So afterwards, Scotty Scheffler, who to say the very least has got a lot going on in his life with a, with a baby on the way. I thought it was a really interesting press conference post. You know, one of the first things that he spoke about was, you know, the perspective on the victory. He said, it's hard to put into words how special this is. It's been a long week, a grind of a week. The course was so challenging. And to be sitting here wearing this jacket again and getting to take it home is extremely special. I feel like I'm playing really good golf right now. I feel like I'm in control of my emotions as I've ever been, which is a good place to be. I feel like I'm maturing as a person on the golf course, which is a good place to be. Close, open and close quotes from Scotty Scheffler there. I think Scotty Scheffler's ability to remain flatlined through the absolute fray of tournaments is right now one of the most distinctive things that separate him. Right, you can look at that and say, yeah, you know, his ball striking is so good. When you're that good a ball striker, it overcomes a lot. I get it, and I, don't, I, I won't argue about that point. But I'm talking about what he was just referring to there, his mental and emotional control. Credit it to maturity. Credit it to his faith. Credit it to whatever you think it is is the reason why. Experience, perhaps. I always wonder. And tomorrow we've got a pretty prominent guest coming on the show. I think if I if I can plant a seed in my mind, hopefully I'll remember to ask this question because I still think there's two areas in the game that that you see the the following manifest. And I believe, and I'll get into what they are in a second, but I believe that your ability to handle pressure at its height is in some way how you're wired. It's a natural gift or converse, a curse, if, you're, if you don't have these skills and you're in positions where, where you otherwise could have excelled if you had. I just think it's a natural gift. Some people, you, you look at like Jack Nicholas and his abel- ability to... to Keep his wits about him. You know, we, we like to we like to hero worship. I get it. And when we look at, you know, a Jack Nicholas, we look at a Tiger Woods, for example, we hero worship them and we say, oh, they're tough. They're tough. They're just tougher than everybody else. And I look at it and go, you know, I'm not sure that that's fair or that's accurate. Larry Nelson was, was, saw, saw heavy action fighting in Vietnam. He comes back and he wins three major championships. You're going to tell me that somebody is tougher than Larry Nelson who heard the sound of spinny bullets over his head? I don't think so. You know, you see these, these great linebackers, football players, quarterbacks that come and play in a pro-am in golf and their knees are shaking. Is that because they're really not tough? Somehow golf exposes them. I don't think so. I don't think so. So I think that I think that's always been used both from a marketing standpoint, but but also just from a misunderstanding of how we define what is and what is not tough in golf. I think there's a lot of people that have not closed at the moment that opportunity was put before them that really wasn't about being tough. They're plenty tough. Just the way their body works. Caused a little hype, a little little yip here or whatever you want to call it. It didn't work. They they chose the wrong line. Their their mind was racing. 
So I think, and I, I've never heard that fully fleshed out by, by anybody that actually is an expert in, in the ways and means of the minds and the body and the emotions of whether there, different people react differently in pressure situations. I think the default is always the same. The default is, well, somebody handled it better than you. I don't know. Do you call it handle it when, when you might not have any active control over it? Right? Tom Watson was on with us a few days ago, and he talked about breath control and how he yawned on the golf course. When you'd see him yawn on the golf course, he wasn't bored. He was loading air into his lungs to try to slow his whole body down. That, kind of, that was interesting to me because that was talking about emotional and physical control. But when you look at these really great champions, I know what's augmented by experience. I get it. I'm not denying that. But when they have this ability to do things in a moment when those around them cannot, for whatever reason, and it's not consistent, it's not all the time, but the greats do it more so than anybody else. I just believe there's something different. I love that graphic that Andrew put up right now. All-time major championship leaders. Jack Nicklaus with 18, Tiger Woods with 15, Walter Hagen with 11. Ben Hogan with nine, Gary Player with nine, tied, obviously. Uh, Tom Watson with eight, came so close to the ninth, didn't he? Harry Varden, Bob Jones, Gene Sarazen, Sam Sneed, Arnold Palmer, all with seven. The ones with the stars are the ones that have the career grand slam. We'll talk about Rory and his efforts towards the same. There's Lee Trevino, Nick Faldo, and Phil Mickelson with six. So it's just, it was incredible. So we, we have more quotes here from Scotty to try to understand everything he was talking about. One of them is it's a couple of quotes, in fact, with, with the big storyline, which was becoming a dad, which I think he handled very, very well. Quote, he says, I'll go home, soaked it in the victory tonight. We'll definitely enjoy the birth of my first child. With, but with that being said, I still love competing. My pro- priorities will change here very soon. My son or daughter will now be the main priority along with my wife, so golf will probably be fourth in line. When it comes to having a kid, every single person says that it changes your life and it's the most special thing in the world, so I, so I cannot. Marriage has been such a tremendous aspect of my life. I cannot even imagine what being a parent is going to be like. All I can think about right now is getting home. I'm not thinking about the tournament. I'm not thinking about the green jacket. I'm trying to answer your questions, and I'm trying to get home. Close quote. Don't blame him. Don't blame him for any of those emotions. But as to Scotty Scheffler, he said some pretty interesting stuff about his competitiveness, and this shows that there isn't necessarily automatically a default disconnect with with Scotty Scheffler. Quoting, I was sitting around with my buddies this morning. I was a bit overwhelmed. I told them, I wish I didn't want to win as badly as I did or as badly as I do. I think it would make the mornings easier. But I love winning. I hate losing. I really do. And when you're here in the biggest moments and when I'm sitting there with the lead on Sunday, I really, really want to win badly. And my buddies told me this morning, My victory was secure on the cross. And that's a pretty special feeling to know that I'm secure forever. And it doesn't matter if I win this tournament or lose this tournament. My identity is secure forever, close quote. Again, it gives you a sense of the depth of where Scotty Scheffler can go. Continuing, uh, uh, quoting again, I try to compete to the best of my abilities. Like I said, I really want to win. I like that's how I was, uh, I was designed, which stepping away from it goes back to my earlier comment, right? Stepping back into the quote. I've been that way since I was a young kid. That's always been a part of me, and I don't think that should be going away anytime soon. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either, close quote. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we're talking about the world of sport, Right. And I realized that, that golf, in particular the Masters and 
Augusta National is, is a high church and religion for many. But we're talking about sport, and, and sport is measured by winning and losing. So struggling with, with, the, with the concept of a burning desire to win, every great champion has possessed that burning desire to win. So it, it causes one to wonder, where do we put Scotty Scheffler now in terms of what he just accomplished? I think everybody would agree with me that we they, they call it a recency bias. I, I'd like to I like to use the phrase the present day conceit where where we have this belief of what's right before us right before our eyes because we love being a part of history. We love witnessing it, right? It's normal. it's 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 fun. but we we tend to we tend to cast wide nets in situations like this. And where do we place Scotty Scheffler right now? Right? We now have a calendar season on the PGA Tour. We're only in April. He's already won three times. He's been knocking on the door and and others. So the questions I have that are rolling around my head, for example, are, is Scotty Scheffler right now an unstoppable force? Is life going to intervene on Scotty Scheffler, obviously being a com- becoming a new dad, and he's, he's flat out saying, hey, everybody, this is my priority. Family, my baby, my wife, it's my priority. It's my number one. Okay, we well, can hear that and go, well, does that pull someone farther away from the prospect of winning, or in his case, does that make it even easier for him to do so? Because he has this mentality, this conviction, this faith, that the, that whatever plays out is has already been pre-planned, right? It's already sketched. His job is just to paint in the colors. And how much freedom does that give him emotionally? I loved at the beginning of the week when they when they asked him. We featured it here when they asked him about, you know being ready and he said you know i i i'm confident that i can perform because i've done everything that i need to do to be ready i've come in doing the work you know ted's out there getting the the bits and pieces but then after that our job is to put the work in so he's got the work ethic too my sense is though having said all of what i just laid out for you is that Players champion, major champion, it's still too soon to anoint Scotty Scheffler as the new fill in the blank here, Jack Nicholas or Tiger Woods, or even VJ Singh when when you know he had a a winning streak that that amounted to incredible number of wins in one season, right? When you get players and they're starting to knock on the door of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wins in a season. Is that what we're going to see from Scotty Scheffler? Will he keep his foot on the gas? Which raises another question to me about Scotty Scheffler. Does Scotty Scheffler have the it factor? I know I'm throwing a lot at you, and I'm going to check in with Dom in a second because I'm sure I want to find out the question today, and I'm sure you guys are responding to a lot of things that I'm bringing up here. Does Scotty Scheffler have the ability to take the game of golf and thrust it up upon his shoulders? Is he, in all aspects, enough? You know when you when you watch the like the talent shows? And they talk about someone as being the full package. Oh, that person's a full package. Which means they, they connect with you. You want to cheer for them. You, you want to hang out with them. All those things, right? Does he have that it factor? I mean, when I, when I look at the leaderboard, uh, right now, if, if I had to say the it factor of the, of the top finishers, I would say it was Max Homa. 
Is that unfair to the guy that just won and the guy that's dominating right now in this short stretch? You know, for a player to be important enough to golf that it can cause people to be interested enough to check it out because this is all against the backdrop where at this Masters, for the first time that I can recall, maybe I'm I'm wrong about this, Don, but for the first time, you had players and important people, Fred Ridley, the chairman, even mentioned it. They were talking about ratings being down in golf, which is blasphemy because the media companies never talk about that. The only thing they ever do is send out press releases where they find nuggets of information that show you that things are going well. Okay, well, what does that say? It says that golf fans are looking at fields of golf and going, yeah, the field is diluted. What does that mean for majors? Well, they just keep getting better, right? Because it's where we see everybody together. And the early ratings that we saw from press releases from ESPN was that they had record ratings on Thursday and Friday as the highest that they've had since 2018. And remember, you're going to hear that and go, wait a minute, Tiger won 2019. I thought he moved the needle, quote, Yes, but his timing was off because of the because of weather delays and so forth. So it really wasn't it's not it's not a fair apples to apples comparison. We don't know what the CBS ratings will be yet, but we're going to know. And what it shows you is that where there's this heightened concern. And again, it's media related. I was on with CBS Sports Radio last night and. They, they were asking the question, like, is this a big problem for golf? You know, the ratings are off. And I was like, whoa, ratings weren't off this week. They weren't off this week because everybody was together. We had the best of the best competing. Now, having said that, let me ask this question in a different way. Maybe, maybe this will, will prompt more of, of your responses or discussion, right? Which is... Andrew, do you have, throw that graphic up there you have of notables and how they finished. Pick a name. If it had been one of these names, and I'm not just, you know, it doesn't only have to be these names. It can, it can be people that were actually in the mix too at the very end. It's okay. What I'm saying is, is that where does Scotty fit in the game right now. I get that the institutions of the game will want you to see Scotty Scheffler as the game's biggest star. And I'm not saying that he's not the game's biggest star. I'm telling you they will want you to see him that way because it's in their best interest to do so. They will want you to be curious about what he's going to do the next time he tees it up. We've had this discussion on here before when I say, is, is, is golf better with a dominating player? And almost all the time, you guys come back and say, yeah, yeah. Any sport is better when there's a dominating team or dominating player. Whether you cast that individual as the good guy or the bad guy is, is up to you. But does Scotty Scheffler capture your imagination? And how important is that right now to the game at large with where the game is at, all things considered? All right, Dom, so with all that, I am curious what your question of the day is, and I am curious what we're hearing from the people pouring in on this Monday. Good morning on this day after the Masters. (laughs) The question of the day, it is kind of a holiday. I think it's actually, is it also tax day in the United States? I think it might be tax day. (laughs) Yeah, it is tax day, yeah. That's kind of a downer. (laughs) Happy holidays. Yeah. (laughs) So we got that going for us. The question of the day, uh, which obviously is centered almost identically around everything you've been discussing, is quite simple. Is Scotty Scheffler unbeatable right now? And right now, 56% of the people are saying no to that. But what's shocking is 44% of the people are saying that Scotty Scheffler is unbeatable right now. Andrew, put his uh, last 10 finishes up on the screen while I'm talking here. That's, 
I don't, I, I don't know. I feel like that's that's higher than I would have imagined. 44% is a pretty large number. But you look at those finishes, and, and he is absolutely on a roll. And to your point, where does this place him, historically or otherwise? I mean, I guess the question would be, the next question I would have, based on all of this, for you, would be at the next major championship, at the PGA Championship, Is it Scotty versus the field? Is that where we are? Are his See, odds going to be better than I, they were I don't, at the Masters? I don't, I don't believe we're at that point. That That's my my whole thing. Like Scotty has won three out of four events. One of them a major. One of them the players. One of them a signature event. And he finished tied for second at the Houston Open. Okay, all right. He came, he came a blade of grass away from a playoff and maybe winning that one too, in fairness to him. But... I still don't see in Scotty Scheffler, and again, I don't know why I feel this way, and maybe it's unfair to feel this way, but I don't see the massive separation, and the stats speak to otherwise. I'm talking about emotions and impressions. I still don't see the massive separation that would be such that when he goes, I'm not saying he's not going to be the favorite. Of course he's going to be the favorite. I'm talking about him going in and being the predominant like it's him against the field, as you phrase it. I just don't see that happening yet. When we went into this event and you posed the question of, well, if I threw in Rom and Brooks, would you take those three against the field? And, and I said yes, and I think a lot of people said yes, and we were right. One of those three won. Happened to be Scotty Scheffler. Right? If you did something similar to that going into Valhalla, going to the PGA Championship, then I would probably agree with you, but I just, I don't yet see the Tiger against the field yet. Is it his putting? Is that your reason? Does it, does yeah. it look, even now, does it look a little tentative? Did it not look right? No. Do you think, well, again, I don't think, what's the here's, divide? here's the problem. This is, this is what one of the issues is with all of this is that, Golf media and golf fans at large are going to try to draw all kinds of conclusions from this past Masters. And for the first two rounds, it's very difficult to draw definitive conclusions. For example, I can't judge Scotty Scheffler's putting adversely by this Masters. I think he putted great at this Masters, which would suggest in the finishes that he's had that he's worked through whatever that issue was with, with, with him and Kenyon have figured it out. Right? So when you say, is it his putting? No, not really. Is it an eye test thing? Yeah. Is it? Is it just... It's just years of watching golf. It's like I watch so much football and basketball, NFL football, American football, that... You know, I can watch a player, an athlete, for a quarter and be like, that guy's got it. Yeah. That guy's think... got a different level of speed, a different level of something. Are you watching him? Because when he hit that shot into the ninth hole, yeah, I got to say, you're like, man, that guy's got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think but this is that over. was, the, again, that was, you know, eight and nine. But I don't think, if and, and that was almost halfway through his round. So say, uh, you know, it, it, for at least, what, 40% of his round, 45% of his round, he didn't have his A game. I thought he was nervy early on. Right, which is understandable. I'm not saying it's not understandable. All I'm saying is I didn't see that blast out of the gates dominating performance. Early on yesterday, it looked like Colin Morikawa may grasp it by the throat himself. And then he became what he called later on, we'll talk about it in the next segment, what he called greedy, which I love the honesty of it. So all I'm saying is that it is incredibly difficult to use this Masters as a template to say we're going to use it. This Here's our crystal ball. This is how we're going to you know, look forward to the PGA Championship. And, and Roms and, and Brooks or... Fleetwood or Homa or Morikawa or whoever else you want to throw in the mix. Rory, maybe. Uh, they're not gonna be able to, they're not gonna be able to deal with that. This thing's got this thing's gonna outrun him because this because that's who he is. And I, that's what I'm saying. I've just not 
and I'm not taking away from from Scotty. What he's doing is amazing. His ball striking's amazing. His green, his fairways hit were amazing. His, his greens and regulation were amazing. But it was everything is against that asterisk of given the conditions. For this tournament, for the Masters. Prior to that, his his performance was impressive at the players and AP. I'm not denying that. I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that if it, it's really hard to judge and go, okay, we always look for this in golf. We always look for we for decades. We we look for the perfect scenario where Tiger and Phil were in the same event and they were both playing their best. For Jack Nicklaus, there was ten or fifteen people that at one time or another we felt that way. Just give us that event. In sixteen, we got out the open with Henrik Stenson and Phil Mickelson. Epic. In contrast to to seventy seven with. Watson and, and Nicholas at the open at Turnberry. Right? Every now and then we get it. And it's and it's just an incredible battle. A heavyweight bout back and forth. We didn't get that. Now, is that going to be cast as we didn't get it because Scotty Scheffler is that much better than the rest? He was at this Masters, but this Masters was influenced not only by performance, but by circumstance. Were there opportunities in the final round for people to catch him? We saw it. It was happening. It was, it was exciting. And then he asserted himself as, as others fell by the wayside. Uh, helped along the way, no doubt, by the 11th hole. 